y'all. What's up? Welcome back. It's your girl Danielle here on your weekly segment on the Chill to Action channel on oh, this is Chill to Action. Hi. Sorry. Brain spread. Welcome to Chill to Action, y'all. Happy Sunday. As always, I have my wonderful co-host with me, Mr. Paul Denizio. That's this guy. What's going on, everybody? Glad to have you here. Another wonderful episode with my uh, good friends here and my uh, new friend now. So uh, it should be a good time. Yeah, new friends. Welcome, welcome. First time host on the call to action slash yeah, show to action channel. Friend. Hello. <laughs> Mr. Jake Nakamata. Glad to be here. Um, let's do the damn thing. <laughs> That's right. That's Man, right. A few we're words. super excited. We're super, super excited to have the one, the only Miss Jen Sturger on the podcast. Welcome, welcome, Jen. How's it going, guys? Going good, going good. Yeah, figure out how this all works. This is fascinating technology you guys are using. <laughs> oh man, shout out to Streamyard. <laughs> I did, I did. It's been a, it's been a weird weekend. So thank you all so much. But we're gonna get straight into it. Jen Sturger, as usual, first question that we love to ask here on the Chill Action Channel. What got you into the showdown, girl? Uh, so I got into the showdown um, because I was talking to Christian and Mark about a different show that they were bringing me in for. Um, and that show didn't end up going for this or that reason. We really don't know what happened. Um, but so when that show didn't go through, he's like, yeah, but I'd still really like to use you. I like your vibe. I think you're funny. Um, and they talked about me potentially like helping host like Schmoes No when it was still around uh, back in the day. And then somehow that became me joining them as like the backstage interviewer for uh, Schmodown. So that's just kind of where I landed after that project that I was teaming up with them originally for didn't end up going. And I mean, I was there for the first day and I was absolutely hooked. I loved the people there. I loved the vibe of the studio. I think one of the first matches I worked with was with Josh Makuga. So, I mean, you can't watch a match with Josh Makuga and not be instantly hooked. It's true. I mean, it's an absolute nice. brain wreck, but you're 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 enthralled, you know. <laughs> yeah, and you did an episode. Hey, Janine, you did an episode with Josh on his old YouTube channel, the Josh mm -hmm. McCoo Show, right? Yeah. Oddly enough, uh, that that same day, I pulled a puppy out of a dumpster. So, like, I'm staying on brand. When yeah. I <laughs> Whenever I have something, anything entertainment-wise to do, and I volunteer to do something animal rescue related, I mean. It's just nonstop. Absolutely. Well, here's a question about the Schmodown. Actually, I heard from the chat already. Well, not that one. This one. How good is your movie knowledge? Would you ever be willing to compete? Even My movie knowledge is... Um, is very niche. So the thing with my movie knowledge is I'm very good at quoting movies. Um, I... The movies that I know, I know very well. Um, I was actually writing a lot of the questions... Um, last year and the year before, um, I had helped uh, Skaliski write some questions. And honestly, like the cuts just got so deep in certain categories that I was like, this is beyond my pay grade. And like, I, I also, I admire the people that can do those type of questions because my brain can only hold so much knowledge. And these people have full-time jobs, most of them, you know, um, some, <laughs> of the newer, some of the newer kids don't, but those people, you know, like the people that you recognize the most, like the legends, like, you know, Rachel Cushing and, you know, um, Mike Kalnowski, they all have careers and they're still be maintaining this high level of competition, but doing their jobs. Um, so I just, uh, my movie knowledge is pretty good. I don't know that I'd ever compete. I think my nerves would get to me too much. Um, and I, I really admire the people that are able to keep it together under those kind of circumstances. Cause I just, don't know that I could do it. Well, is there any like specific thing or category or genre that you might do like an exhibition match for that you feel strongly about? Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like if we did like an only back to the, <laughs> only back to the future, uh, all those movies, like super deep cuts of that or Indiana Jones or, um, James Bond, like any of those, like I would really enjoy just because like those are the things that I watch a lot. Um, Pixar, I'm pretty good. I feel like I'm pretty good at, but I mean, I don't know. I, like I said, I get, I get nervous for other people when they're competing. So I can only imagine what kind of basket case I would be if I had to sit behind the desk. 
But I guess you do know all the beats to Lindsay Lohan is just my luck. I do. Hi, <laughs> Brianne. I mean, um, my thesis in college for one of the classes I took, well, my final, I wouldn't say all my thesis, but like my final paper was about breaking down all of the, how Mean Girls was like a breaking down of like female like stereotypes and stuff like that. And like, I broke down like the sociological issues of Mean Girls. That was one of my papers. And then the other paper was comparing, uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? You had to compare two movies. And I compared Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? to The Wizard of Oz. Because oh. like, it's all basically versions of the Odyssey to some degree. Um, yeah. So I, the Iliad and the Odyssey. So like, that's, that's what I did for my like final papers that I had to do. So I took a couple of film classes in college, um, but I was actually studying criminology and psychology. So like it was just an elective course that I just happened to really enjoy. Nice. Very nice. All right. So Jen, being speaking of you know getting into. Uh, you know, female stuff like that. You are a reporter and in the sports industry, and which is a big deal, I think, in my opinion. Um, I think it's really important for women to be seen inside of sports industries and all of that good stuff. So I'm really proud of all of the work that you do, uh, uh, just for females in general in that capacity. Do you remember a few years ago the interview question that Cam Newton received from a female reporter, where he kind of laughed at her? Oh yeah, I mean. That kind of happens all the time. You just have to learn how to shrug those incidents off. I don't make a big deal out of those type of things. Um, I think it's a bad look on the athlete more than it is on the actual reporter who's just trying to do their job. Um, so if a guy's willing to actually go there and risk getting himself canceled, that's on him. <laughs> That's a great because response. Like my, my, like, I'm not going to be the girl that goes and makes a big deal out of it someone else is going to comment on it for me. Like right now, I mean, I work with some amazing people both at Schmodown and at, um, at AEW, but I got to say like, there are certain individuals that just don't know how to turn it off. Like MJF where I'm like, I work with great people and MJF's there as well. Um, <laughs> and, and he does, he, he, that who he, who you see is who he is. You know what I mean? Like he's not sugarcoating any of that. He's not playing any of that up. <laughs> um, and so it's uh, I think it's a worse look on them you know if they're going to misbehave in an interview that's totally on them I mean if I I think if anything people like Andrew Guy have prepared me for dealing with the MGF, MJFs of the world because I don't think there's much people can say to actually rattle me these days well that actually leads me this is going to be a this or that question but I'm going to throw it out here early before we get into it uh, a better, bigger heel was. What's a bigger heel, MJF or Andrew Guy? <laughs> um, I am gonna have to say uh, MJF. Hundred oh. percent. Okay. Fair Hashtag enough. better than you, except for me. Uh, he's not better than me, and I'll tell him that to his face. Um, oh. He, he. Uh, I think underneath it all, Andrew Guy is a good person. I'm not convinced of that with MJF. <laughs> um, sometimes like, you know, you look at someone and you're like, that person is soulless. Like that's sometimes how I feel about MJF where I'm like, I've watched him try to feed Cody Rhodes dog chocolate. And you're just like, you're just a dick. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, if you don't like, if animals don't like you, I, I don't, I can't trust you. Um, and that's the kind of thing is Andrew Guy still has a dog, MJF. Like, I think those are his dad's dogs. I don't think they're actually his. <laughs> I just want to give a quick shout out to, uh, William the Beast Bibiani and Rachel J. Cushing in the chat here. Oh, hey, Bibbs. You have evil twin named Jessica has been working behind the scenes with Andrew Guy. According to Bibbs, he might know more than we do. But this movie actually brings up a good question. Could Jessica be the 10th manager? Oh, uh, God, I hope not. I don't, <laughs> I don't want that kind of stress on my life. I feel like managing Schmodown contestants will be like herding cats. And <laughs> um, God bless all of the people that are going into this draft, all the managers that signed up for this, because it's going to be absolute chaos uh, the first time out of the gate. Because I feel like 
there's still things that need to be worked out in the format of the draft. I'm sure Christian's got, you know, toiling away in his, you know, SEN uh, laboratory he's got going on. But um, there's definitely probably some things that still need to be worked out as far as the format that I think people still have questions about that are signed up to manage. So um, could I manage? Yeah. And I think I could draft a really, really good team. I think I can give somebody good advice as far as who to take. Uh, that said, I don't want that kind of weight on my shoulders. <laughs> Okay. Well, maybe your twin Jessica can do that, and you can just. <laughs> well, Bibiani is yelling at us to answer the twin question. <laughs> uh, Brianne said Jennifer does the interviews. Jessica, wow, what did she say? What exactly? Jessica is. Um, I don't know who Jessica is. Uh, I Jennifer does the interviews. Her. Jessica does managing. I feel we look very. I, I've been told we look very similar, um, but I do not know. I don't know her. <laughs> to quote Stacey Howard, I don't know her. I don't know her. <laughs> quote Stacey Howard versus uh, quoting Mariah Carey. I'll quote Stacey Howard. There you go. Good call. <laughs> there you go. Well, it brings up another thing. Uh, Christian's obviously started the SCN network now, um, and that's still in works here as he's expanding some um, with different shows. He's talked about doing a Schmodown show with Ben Bateman. Is there a chance that uh, you might be able to be on a show with him at some point? I have no idea. Honestly, it would just have to be, we would have to work out with our schedules. It's like, I'm already talking three hours a day doing sports radio. And then Tuesdays and uh, Tuesdays, I'm usually leaving town either during the day or at night to go and get to AEW on Wednesdays. So it just all depends, you know? I do want to ask you a question about swings and misses. So I, I love that podcast. Swings and misses is such a, is a great thing to listen to, to hear the dynamic between you and your husband is really fun. Especially this last episode, talking about the whole Garrett Rudolph situation to hear. Oh my God. He got so heated and he got so heated because he wasn't listening. And I was That's a perfect example of the dynamic of our relationship. You're mad because you're not listening to what I'm actually saying. And um, it's like a perfect example of how fights can transpire. And you're like, you don't even know what you're fighting for. You're just fighting to fight. I'm like, you were not listening. I'm like, I think you heard half of the conversation because he got on his phone to like look something up. And then he got mad at me because he thought he heard something and he missed like the beginning of it and basically went on this whole fight tirade. And I was like, my whole thing with him is I always just give him the look and I'm like, is this the hill you're going to die on today? <laughs> this and, you, and you both it basically ended up at the same point yes anyway. especially once i found a picture of mason rudolph kicking them kicking miles garrett in the cleats up in the nuts yep yeah yep. that is a not, heated not, not, heated not so straight up cleat to nut yep <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that was a lot of stuff that, was, about that situation that was a real cheap a uh, live action vasectomy on the field, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel like just seeing hearing about that. All the men just go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Sucked up. <laughs> Everything just went up right now. <laughs> do you find it hard to, to deal with your husband like that sometimes, or do you find it fun? Like, does the whole idea for the podcast with the two of you working together, how I do you feel about that? It's fun uh, most of the time. I just, there are certain days where, Look, my favorite pastime is being right. <laughs> I enjoy being right more than like pretty much anything. Uh, so we'll we'll like end up fighting or bickering about something, and then like I, for instance, I had told him this one house we were looking at in El Paso. I was like, they're charging way too much for this, and so I was like, I told the realtor, I was like, check out this house and see what the um. See what the actual like city the city says it's worth and i had a number in my head and i'd written it down and um she came back and she was like yeah jen you're absolutely right she goes how much did you think it was and i was like this is the number and she goes it was like three thousand dollars off the fact that i came that close to guessing the price of the house and um <laughs> i was like oh i was like cody you know what i go i am so relieved i'm actually so happy because they were asking for so much more money for this house. And I was like, it's not worth that. But I go, you know what I'm happiest about? That I was right. <laughs> <laughs> Literally nothing else made me that. He goes, I knew this was going to come back somehow to you being the best. And I was like, yes, always. 
Always. I think it's fair to say that most movie trivia Schmodown fans agree with that as well. Same thing, Rachel J. Cushing, congrats on all the work and recognition you're getting, Jen. You definitely deserve it. (laughs) Fans of the Schmodown and watching you be on the Schmodown and then seeing all of your work outside of it, definitely you are a rock star in this business. Oh, I mean, I'm a rock star because the women around me make me rock stars. I mean, that's, that's just what it comes down to. I've had the pleasure of working with people like Rachel, people like Brian, and I, I respect the hell out of what they do. And I have to say that the Schmodown family has given me a really great set of strong women to hang out with. And I feel like in LA that that's something that a lot of groups are missing, you know, is being able to find a core group of women that are able to like lift each other up and don't view each other as competition, even though they may even play each other, they just, they're there for each other unconditionally, even when the game's, you know, off. Um, so like, that's why I'm so grateful for the friendships that I've, I've gotten there. You know, um, I'm really good friends with Emma, um, Grace, all those girls too. And it's just, um, I think when I first started, it was hard for me to see people try to compare me to Emma because I, I feel like she and I bring such different things to the table. Um, her knowledge is so unparalleled when it comes to things like star Wars and comes to things like Harry Potter. And right now, like I, I, she and I sat down when I was, um, doing her makeup one day and I was just like, I feel good vibes for you, Emma. I'm like, I feel like something big's going to happen. Then like, lo and behold, I was like, she got the star Wars gig over at Collider. And so I couldn't be happy for her, happier for her, you know? That's amazing. It's really good to see like all of the female empowerment inside of the Schmodown, especially when you don't see a lot of that being focused on too much inside of the YouTube industry or the YouTube space in general. Mm -hmm. So I'm really glad that the Schmodown is really inclusive inside of all of that. Oh yeah. I think I I didn't, I don't know if it used to be when I first got there. um, But I know that Christian and Mark have really made an effort to make the show more inclusive because people should be able to see themselves in the competitors and feel like, they can relate to them. And I feel like that that's representation across the board when it comes to TV and film anyway. That's awesome. That, that was basically my question. Thank you. <laughs> I want to bring up that you mentioned having strong women in the Schmodown, um, and that's definitively what the case is. I think it's also happened within, even with our own podcast, we have three strong females uh, that are the core of call to action to be honest with mm-hmm. Danny. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a similar base. I think the showdown really helps to emphasize that we're all together. We can all have strong yeah. women and strong men. And it just, it's a great community for that. Speaking of that also the action army, as you know, is behind this part of the, behind this podcast. We had the hot takes tried to find the action army versus the call to action versus everything else, but the action army formed a while ago. Mm-hmm. But the oh, look at the cat! Look at the cat! I'm, <laughs> I'm always distracted by cat. You better, okay. <laughs> but uh, we have a feeling. We have a saying that we feel that the action army really solidified in Houston, where you were at. Uh huh. Because uh, we had that that at the uh, after show at that bar with the one lone <laughs> bartender <laughs> and the ghost. Okay. Down. <laughs> I never felt sorrier for an individual in the series industry than I did that girl that night because I'm like she had no clue this was coming. <laughs> You could see it in her face as soon as everyone went, got there. She went to work that day and was just like, "All right, I'll couple. I'll probably make a hundred and fifty bucks, whatever. You know, maybe like my regulars will come in and like it'll be an easy chill night. What the fuck? <laughs> Boom! Yeah, Boom. we came in a little deep. <laughs> just look down there and like at me, and I'm like, "Look, I literally wrote down what I wanted. I was like, I put it down on the bar. I was like, get me this whenever. Here's my card. Start a tab, whatever. Make it as easy as humanly possible for her.' But I, I felt so bad. Poor thing. It was rough. It was it was tough. But but that uh, Houston show was so much fun. It really was. It was. Yeah. I want to see that again. The wrestling ring brought such an actual wrestling element to the showdown that it- you guys have no idea. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, but I'm going to say it. Maybe someone's already talked about it here. I mean, if you're, I mean, if you have Guy and this is Andrew Guy and Ben Bateman's like, you know, baby, baby, whatever. I don't grandchild. We're best uh, friends. We're actually all best friends. But. <laughs> best friends. Um, but so I'm thinking. I don't know if you guys got told what happened, but like. Guy actually got hit with a chair prior to and like got his lip busted up. And I was mm-hmm. just like, oh my God, this is why we can't have people who don't know what they're doing. 
right? And like, originally, I think the plan was to throw him through a table. And I was like, what the fuck, Christian? No, you can't have people bumping. Um, and then I was like, Christian, but if we're going to bump, I go, for the sake of being hilarious, I think it should be a bump on a table full of chips. Because, <laughs> like a hardcore match, but it's just potato chips. Because poor Alex will never live that down in my eyes. Like, we, went to, we went to Chicago and like I showed up and like literally he'd been told by Christian to get a variety, some chips and stuff. But I guess Alex just heard variety of chips. So there were like 35 bags of potato <laughs> chips. Like, I'm don't get me wrong, he's got great taste in potato chips. But <laughs> I I just thought it was so funny. I was like, we need to make sure someone gets dropped through a table of chips. And it's like, by God, that, those potato chips had a family. You know, like. <laughs> oh, JR, huh? Little JR, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Oh, my God. Also blames Bateman because he's so uncoordinated. That might be true. We've seen him we, throw things. Yeah. Not no, very I, good. Not that Bateman's uncoordinated. It's that his clothing is too tight. <laughs> <laughs> that could absolutely be right. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're yeah. usually quick to right, Ben. Love you a long time. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Ben's used to us uh, uh, getting on him a little bit. We've been rolling in the uh, send uh, chat perfect. with him. Perfect. We've been roasting the shit out of it for a week. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just, it's too easy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> there are, I, I, it's, most of the time Christian lets me get away with it, but there are times where he's like, oh man, you stepped on a moment. And I'm like, that's what I do in my life, Christian. It's like, whenever I feel like things get too serious. Um, I feel like I've got to bring some levity to the situation. Um, I saw someone in the comments that asked, um, what the hardest interview I've ever done was. And I think it has to be when I had to talk to Paul Preston after we'd found out that his wife uh. was dead. And because my, it was, it was hard watching him lose, but it was also, it was hard seeing a friend that you really care about going through what he's cared because he's become such a, once you're on the show, you become part of the family. You know, it doesn't matter how many times you're on the show, you're part of us. And Paul has really been a fun, fun loving guy to deal with this entire season. I've thoroughly enjoyed like all the backstage interviews and promos with him. Um, really gotten to know him this season and I really admired the fact that he showed up that day to do his match because there are things so much bigger than the schmodown that were going on in his life. And he still was like, it meant enough to him to be there and to still compete. Um, but talking to him, I just had to let him know that, you know, we love him and we're here for them and that we're all going to fight this together with him. And, that was, I think, the hardest interview to get through. It still is hard to like even think about it. Um, that, that, really one was, that one was tough. Um, watching Dan Merle cry. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Merle making me cry uh, was also tough. But I think I was, I think I was premenstrual, so that's what I'm gonna go with on that one. <laughs> um, My super, go I was super emotional. I was like. Stop, guys. And my husband was watching it like later. And he goes, Were you fucking crying? Because <laughs> he doesn't know, like, he knows that I'm like a pretty, I don't cry publicly. Like, so he's like, What is wrong with you guys? He's like, It is a trivia show. I was like, You know, what? I understand. Um, <laughs> but uh, that, like, I feel like the most, the hardest interview was definitely Paul. Fair enough. That makes a lot of sense. You carried it well. Maybe your hardest physical interview, though, might have been this one. Oh, that was so funny. <laughs> Is it really that heavy? The war ever? Is it really that no. heavy? <laughs> K-Fate. K-Fate. Oh, you played it. Perfect. It's very heavy. <laughs> I'm actually a really good comedic actress. I enjoy physical comedy. And so I had told him, I said, I think what would be hilarious and it would sell his size even more is if he goes to hand it to me Warfather goes to hand it to me and then I drop it because I can't hold it because it's so heavy and so 
the timing of it worked so well and kudos to the two guys in the interview um, because they sold me dropping it so well. Like they reacted perfectly. Um, <laughs> but that said, like when you're present in the moment, like you're supposed to be when you're doing interviews because interviews is all about listening. Um, whenever you're interviewing someone, as you guys know, it's not about you, it's about the other person. And so it's like, if you're not listening to the person, you can't react accordingly. And that's something that like, I think I bring to AEW is that I, it really truly is about the talent. It's about the people that you're speaking to and not about yourself. I'm just basically a microphone stand that has a little bit of a personality and, you know, can snap back or react to them accordingly, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. Got our question from the chat. Billy Belford wants to know, what is it like to work with the absolutely amazing, talented, and hilarious Eddie Pence? Oh, I didn't know this was Eddie Pence's ghost account. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, Eddie's, Eddie's hysterical. When we got Swings and Misses, I was like, we need a third person, and I really would like to bring in Eddie, because Eddie and I, I don't know if people realize this, Eddie's my writing partner. Um, along with my husband, like the three of us are kind of a writing team, but Eddie and I write a lot together, just ourselves. Um, and so there are times that we've been like sitting at my kitchen table, the table that I'm sitting at right now, and we are laughing so hard. I literally had to change my pants because I picked my <laughs> Um, where I was like, oh my God, am I getting that old? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I love Eddie Pence. He was one of the first people I met out here when it came to stand up and he has supported me from the beginning. And um, he's kept pushing me even when I was like, I don't want to do this. I hate this. You know, he always reminded me, you know, uh, we always say have this saying together that uh, life's just a big game of shoots and ladders. So it's like, yeah, you're on a real, real shitty shoot right now, but there's a ladder at the end of it. So just <laughs> stop feeling sorry for yourself and climb out of it. There you go. There you there go. You go. Love that. Well, you bring up uh, meeting Eddie in the comedy circuit. During these live shows, there's usually a comedy show the night before. Yeah. Are we ever going to see you? I did one in New York. Um, I was supposed to do the one in Houston, but I got super sick, so I didn't. I almost didn't. I almost didn't even make it to Houston. And um, and whatever I had, Emma must have gotten because she got really sick afterwards too. So. But uh, I was supposed to do the show in Houston, didn't make it out to do that one. But I did the show in New York, and I actually was – I was a, I had a really fun set in that room. Um, and I actually ended up having a little bit of extra time at the end. And I started telling the story about how, you know, when Jay got really – so when Jay Washington got really sick, I was one of the first people at the hospital. And he'll, he'll tell you that story. Like, we went and checked on him – um, we took him an iPad and so he had Cody's iPad to like get caught up on all the Netflix and all that stuff. Um, and I told the story about how he wrote a note to me, um, when it was finally like coherent enough to write, he said, it, the time is 7:52 on such and such date. And I just realized I have a tube in my dick <laughs> and I took a picture of it because I was like, at least he still has a sense of humor. And I I started writing jokes with him um, there. And he was like, you can't, and like he was trying not to laugh because he was still intubated. But we were like, he was like, I was like, I can't kill Jay Washington. Like, I just, <laughs> I'm like, Jay, we really, I'm like, if you have a thought, just write it down and we'll work on it when you get out of here. But like, I don't want you to like choke on the tube. Um, but when I got the, I, the, the iPad back, I happened to be scrolling through it or something and like a Facebook alert went off and I was like, Oh, what's this? Cause I automatically assumed it was Cody's Facebook. And it was this guy, it was this girl being like, yeah, I want to come over in the hot tub and do this and this and this to you. And I was like two seconds away from calling my husband and being like, motherfucker, I'm throwing all of your stuff in the hallway. Don't you, I'm taking the walk. Don't you ever come home. Oh, this is Jay's profile. <laughs> and I, was, and I was telling the story on screen, and I just said, I was like, I don't know what's funnier. I was like, the fact that Jay thinks that he's some girl's gonna come over at 2 a.m. or that he thinks he has a hot tub. Like, <laughs> it, was really, it was really funny, so I enjoyed it. 
Okay. I really, uh, I, I hope I get to do a uh, comedy in New York uh, again when we come there and next year. January, January, sweet. I will be doing a show. If anyone's in LA or circa LA, I am doing a roast next Saturday at the comedy store. Um, it will be a wrestling theme roast. Nice. Um, and it's taking place like in the afternoon because they're also doing a wrestling show around it. It's called Storcade. And um, basically it's going to be a bunch of dead wrestlers roasting each other. So I get to reprise my role as Miss Elizabeth. So it's going to be a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Got another chat question. We know you're friends with Chris Jericho now, have you? And he talked about Movie Trivia Sprout out at Oh, year, yeah, right? all the time. He brings it up all the time, how he thinks he'd be so good at it. He talks so much shit. Um, he's like, I'll only do it if you're on the desk. And I was like, put that stipulation in there. Um, but, yeah, he, he definitely yeah. wants to compete. I think he'd be really good in teams. Um, he is so funny. Uh, that guy can make... Basically, he can turn anything in life into a golden soundbite or a t-shirt. It's insane. Um, I've learned so much working with people like him and Dustin Rhodes. I mean, the two of them are just such a wealth of knowledge when it comes to that world. And I'm still, albeit very green, but like I'm so eager to learn and to be a part of a company again, like the Schmodown, that's just very based in inclusivity, um, like being inclusive and, you know, um, brings in people that are kind of like misfit toys, you know, for lack of a better word. Uh, Cody Rhodes has a great segment on AEW Dark called um, From Undesirable to Undeniable. And hopefully he'll bring me on there soon because I told him, I'm like, I'd love to be able to tell the AEW audience my story and where I come from. Um, because a lot of it, I feel like whatever news like that breaks, like the stuff that I was dealt back in 2010, people only see the beginning of the shit storm and they never see it through the end. Like no one wants to be there to clean it up and to make sure the person's okay. And so I feel like no one, people thought I died or something in 2010 or 2011 and they never got to see my climb back and what it took to get to where I'm at the current moment. And honestly, Mark and Christian played such a huge part of it. Oh, that's that's so amazing to hear. Yeah. Thanks. Very happy to hear. Thanks. Is very happy to hear that. Yeah. Same thing. It's got to be rough to kind of deal with all of that, having to deal with what you dealt with back then, and and just growing from it and rising from it. And it was never anything that I instantly knew about. Uh, so I, I yeah. watched the ABC interview and I cried. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, I look back at that interview and I don't know that person. Like I recognize her, but I don't know her. She was scared. She was incredibly depressed and anxious and just kind of wanted her life back. But I was so heavily media trained and was just trying to get out of a terrible situation that had nothing to do with me. And I just, I just wanted my life back. I was super young and I didn't know what I was dealing with or who I was dealing with. And, um, yeah, like I feel like most people don't even realize they they just automatically wanted to assume because of the way I looked like I had had an affair with um, Brett Favre, but it's like I didn't. I've never even met him. Ugh. Like I've never physically met him in person. And like when I tell people that, they're like, "What? Wait, start over. Tell the whole story." Because it's like there's so much of my story never got told. People just made their assumptions based off of bullshit clickbait headlines, basically that were clickbait before clickbait was a thing. Yeah. You know, uh, but you are alive and here, and we love you. Uh, yeah. Yes, we love a Jen Sturger here. We love a Jen Sturger. And you have <laughs> definitely become a a strong presence and a strong voice. Um, I gotta say, Jake, I didn't anticipate your voice being this deep. It was a real shock <laughs> to hear you speak. You've I was met like, me oh. twice. <laughs> I've been in Houston for like an hour at the bar. <laughs> At the bar, you think I remember any of that? That's adorable. Oh, <laughs> there was some. Honestly, like I have such terrible social anxiety that, um, like those type of scenarios can really like trigger it. So I'm always kind of like a little bit out of my element um, whenever we have to do like the fan meet and greets and stuff like that. Um, so normally you'll see me like pair up with someone. Um, 
showdown wise like i think in houston it was guy and i in the back like i'm always i ruin everyone's photos like that's like my goal uh, everybody else is trying to take a great photo and i'm always going to be the one that's like um, <laughs> I definitely put my foot in my mouth meeting you in Houston. The first thing I told you is like, you're a lot shorter in person than I thought. <laughs> hey, it's fine. I'm used to it. Everyone's all right. Always, you know. I honestly think, I think it works to my advantage working at AEW though, because if I was a giant, like it would make the guys look really small, you know? So yeah. I think being, you know, pint size and fun size has uh, its advantages. Yep. Well, I, I, did, a, I agree. <laughs> I had a quick question about AEW. Um, since we were talking about uh, things from the past, not trying to go too deep into it, but the uh, the FSU Cowgirls, which was, you know, when everything first yeah. was going up, and Lana was part of that. Mm -hmm. Is Or CJ, or I don't know how I should refer to her, but... Uh, CJ's fine, yeah. Is she the reason that pushed you into going into like wrestling journalism? Oh no. Fun facts. Uh, Lana, CJ and I were actually in WWE Divas camp together. Nice. So I was actually a part of that crop that they pulled out of LA. The issue is my body is made out of graham crackers <laughs> and could not withstand uh, the beating, honestly, that I got. I was never really even supposed to go through the camp. I think they just liked my mic skills and they liked my personality and they thought I was built enough that they could like mold me into a wrestler. And it just, it just didn't pan out that way. Um, I broke my neck in the training camp for the second time. Ooh. I'd broken it previously yeah. about a year and a half before that. And it just, once it, once it broke the second time, I was like, clearly I'm just not meant to do this. It's like years and years of treating my body like crap and having eating disorders. Um, it actually destroys your bones. It makes you basically have like early onset osteoporosis and like you usually have neck and back problems. And that's what I was dealing with is just years of abusing my body. Mm -hmm. um, so Divas Camp really wasn't in the cards for me. And then I think honestly what it came down to is I am not a yes man. I'm not a yes woman. And um, I don't kiss a lot of ass where I work places. I'm nice. And I, I feel like I'm um, fun to be around and I'm polite to everyone, but I'm not going to like kiss ass. And I don't deal well with people trying to rule me with fear. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, when yeah. I feel like you can get so much more out of competitors and out of um, employees and anyone is with kindness and encouragement. But the minute you work for anyone that has to rule you by fear, it's just not a healthy work environment. And that just wasn't a place I wanted to be. Makes complete sense. Makes Fair complete enough. Sense. Well, yeah. that in mind. That said, uh, I, had, I taught CJ how to run because CJ... <laughs> He ran like a dancer, and I was like, "Can you make it look like athletic? <laughs> um, look like a gazelle?" Because she was just so graceful as, a, as and I'm like, "CJ, I got it. You don't know how to run? Like, no one can <laughs> run." And I was like, "So teaching her how to like hit ropes and like, um, uh, and run back then, and now she's far surpassed me. I feel like people don't give her enough credit because she actually could do a lot of stuff in the ring, um, because of her dance dance background." Definitely, definitely. Nice. Well, with that being said, I think it's time to go into our little game that we do every week here. It's called This or That. And if you were here for the first time in the chat, I will be asking Jen some two, I'll say two different things, and she'll get to choose between them. I'll give little to no context. She can take any context she wants to expand yeah. on it, and uh, we'll see what happens. A few of them are, are normal questions. A few of them are tailor-made. So uh, we'll start with a question we ask everybody. Every week, on this channel especially. It's a very important question. Okay. Are you team guy or team trader? Team trader. <laughs> yeah. Team yes, trader. Team trader. I think I heard properly. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm always team guy. Bye, girls. <laughs> you have chosen wisely. That is the <laughs> correct answer. That is the only correct answer for that question. <laughs> Okay. Next question. I would say from Billy Belford in a way. Who's funnier, Eddie Pence or Mark Ellis? Uh, Eddie 
has gallows humor like I do. And the fact that he tried to convince his wife to get married on 9-11 so that if he ever forgot, he could always say, well, some people are just wanting their husbands back tonight. I lost it. Uh, or the fact that like the other day on the show, oh, I'm sorry. I know the other day on the show, what did I say? Oh, I was talking about my eyebrows in the early 2000s and how I basically, I pulled, I had plucked so much of my eyebrows out and I'm still growing them back. I was like, I, I said, my eyebrows could have been a make a wish foundation child. Something along those lines. And, and he was like, your eyebrows were so sick. John, he like tagged it. He goes, yeah, John Cena used to visit them in the hospital. You <laughs> get me so much. Um, so, uh, yeah. That's a good one. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, um, but yeah, I, I, I enjoy both of them a lot. Uh, Mark Ellis is one of those comedians that, doesn't have to have a lot of painful, terrible things to happen to him in order to create his art. And that is something that I don't think a lot of comedians are capable of. People feel like they need to be miserable in order to be funny. And I don't think that, um, I don't think that Mark has to do that. And I think that that's awesome. Um, sometimes I would get that way and I'd be like, does my life really have to be miserable for me to be funny? Um, and the answer is yes. Uh, but <laughs> um, there's definitely, I've, I've always dealt with the harder times in my life with humor. And that's what made me survive. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, here's one. We know you have a big heart, especially for animals. So I'm going to ask it out. Are you a cat person or a dog person? I'm both. You're both. Yeah, I'm both. I have That's cats, cool. but it's just because like they're low maintenance. You know what I mean? Like I want a dog, but we're in an apartment and I just, I'm gone so much right now. And um, so is my husband. So it's like, we basically like just high five each other on the way to and from the airport at this point. So I, we just don't have the time right now, but if we get a reliable dog sitter, maybe because my husband really needs someone to play with. So <laughs> uh, I really need to get a dog soon. I mean, okay. after he uh, retired off of a walk-off home run. That's pretty heard. dope, right? That is pretty fucking dope. That was <laughs> very dope. A lot of people were like, did he hit the walk-off and then decide to retire? And I was like, no, he knew that was his last at bat. But at that point, he wasn't even thinking about it. He was thinking, just get the guy over. Because right. there's a guy on base. Um, so he wasn't even thinking about it until he hit it. And then he was rounding third and he was like holy Please shit say. that was my last at bat and he was like do i pimp it no don't don't pimp it act like <laughs> you before they don't know you're retiring yet that'll be weird his teammates knew but like Aww. but like the announced team they knew but like none of the crowd knew so like it wasn't a public thing yet um yeah. so yeah it was uh it was pretty special that's that's very sweet Okay, this is one we ask every week. You might not even understand it, but I'm contractually obligated to ask it now. We do have to ask it all the time. We do. Sorry. Uh, either call to action host James Spence or a gaping chest wound. Um, I've already had multiple gaping chest wounds, so what's one more? <laughs> <laughs> uh, James bites the dust again. It's been a couple of weeks, but we're glad that somebody's been back to choosing gaping chest wound. <laughs> I always reference it just to let everybody know my favorite one still was Bibiani came on. He yeah. did say James Spence with a gaping chest wound. Oh, funny. <laughs> that was a nice one. This is yeah. a very, very funny man. Um, <laughs> he it, Sometimes it's hard to not break. I feel like I've had a couple Jimmy Fallon moments on the show, but I'm pretty good at keeping a straight face. It's very hard to get me to pop. <laughs> and he surprised me once or twice. And Jay Washington's got me once, but that Jay Washington got me real hard when he said, "You ain't shit." This interview's over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect timing! I couldn't even plan that. He had, been, he had been talking so much shit to me, and I forget what I said, but I basically called him out, and I smiled, like I asked it like a question, but I was really talking shit to him. And he just smiled. He was like, ah, you ain't shit. This interview's over. You broke Jay in that. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did. Well, he got me right back. So, 
Fair enough. Funny. Fair enough. Okay, I got two more for you. Two more for you. What's harder, interviewing the full contingent of horsemen or the full contingent of corruption? <laughs> um, honestly, despite having horses, uh, the leather jackets make corruption smell worse. So... <laughs> <laughs> Um, cause like it, it's, there've been a couple days that we haven't had air conditioning in the studio and I'm like, you guys are going to have to take those jackets out back and Febreze the shit out of them. I <laughs> could not stand next to you. I was like, we should literally have spray deodorant outside with Febreze for these leather jackets. <laughs> oh my sweet baby Jesus. Um, it's just really, it gets really hot in the studio and it gets really hot under the lights. Um, so no, Stacy and Grace don't smell bad. It's the boys because they're they're bigger and they sweat and it's like under those lights, it's brutal. <laughs> Good save on Stacy and Grace. Yeah, <laughs> Stacy, Stacy and Grace smell like. Well, they smell like what you like what you want to spray on chance to not, <laughs> to not have smelly leather jackets. Um, but I I love all of them. I I give them so much crap, but. Um, Mike Kalinowski's had a year. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Flesh! Ah, Mr. Sam Jones! And like that, he's gone. You know we gotta get it in here. You say his name, oh, we gotta throw it in there once. I know, it's so, so funny. <laughs> oh, my heart broke for him, though, um, because as big of a heel as he is, I know how hard Mike studies and how serious he takes this uh, this game. And so we had him on last week and it was we actually showed him and he, he took his, it very well. It was impressive. His actually. reaction to that was he, amazing. He went all into it. And we forget, you know, we'll tape a bunch of shows in a row. Um, which I'm like, Christian, the jig is up. Do I really have to change clothes between every single one? I've run out of outfits a long time ago. <laughs> I'm basically just wearing gym pants and shirts that I can find that are clean at this point. Um, but, like, <laughs> I, have to, I have to change for every single one. Everybody else just has to bring an outfit for whatever. And, um, and I, uh, yeah, I forget where I was going with that, but anyways, um, <laughs> You just okay. try not to smell like the corruption team. So funny. So true. Great callback. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> okay. The last oh. dish of that question that I would have then would be from our, our good friend, Andrew Guy. Jen or Jessica? Um, only Andrew Guy gets to call me Jessica. Anyone else that tries to do it, I'm like... No, don't. That's gimmick infringement. <laughs> Get your own. Get your own. Speaking of Andrew Guy, actually, there's a question I had in the uh, guy, the famous, very famous Guy versus Merle match that uh, broke Christian's soul, I think, at that point when he was doing the studio. Um, he went around saying that Ben and you were the only ones who thought he had a chance. Who? Andrew. Andrew, guys, he said that you, you and oh, Ben, were against, the only against that, Merle. Against Merle, is that yeah. true? Yeah, you did have his back. Okay, I wasn't sure if that was kayfabe or not. Yeah. Oh no, I did. I, I legit. Um, that's not kayfabe. I legit had Andrew. I, I thought Andrew was just. Look, I feel the same way sometimes when I make my football picks. Sometimes they are terribly wrong, but like on the off chance, I just wanted to be right on that upset. You know what I mean? Um, so I would have, I would have totally, I would have, to I was totally backing guy. Yeah. As were we all anyway. Maybe not, not everybody else, but we all were. And look, I love Dan Merle. I love Dan Merle. I think he's one of the greatest to ever play the game and ever will play the game. But that said... I think the look on Christian's face <laughs> was worth everything to me because I enjoy chaos. I enjoy when things don't go perfectly as planned because I'll give Christian this credit. He is so good at thinking on his feet for all outcomes because people wanted to say, is the show fixed? The show's not fixed, um, but we have to basically plan for all outcomes. 
And I don't think he had ever planned for that outcome. None of us had. Um, but watching Christian stay was just... And I think there's a video, a behind the scenes, a BTS uh, video of what happened to that room. Because yeah. you, they panned across the room. And I think you can even see Kalinowski be like... <laughs> and Bibbs has his hands on his head. And everyone's just sitting there like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this is happening. Um, and I'm just looking at, uh, I'm just looking at Christian going, <laughs> I know, I know, no, you did not take an edible before you started calling this mad. <laughs> we were all right, but we were all right there. Yeah, you could hear a pin drop in that room, Brandon. It was insane. Yeah, he got physically uncomfortable watching. The, he was like, you could see him like stretching out, just going. And that's the thing is, while I say, and so, so Guy really went off the rails with his character, and um, I think it upset a lot of people, particularly Dan and Mara. But I, I, he did genuinely feel bad that he had upset Dan um, because he does respect him. Yeah, you know. Uh, and so, like I said, kayfabe aside, Andrew Guy's a good human being. Yeah, we definitely Sorry. are. Sorry to break it for you guys. That's <laughs> a total douche. <laughs> now, anybody who's met him would agree with you. Yeah, we got to when we met him, we hung yeah, out with him. We actually picked him up from the airport in Houston and hang out with him like all day. We had That's so really care. ballsy of him to like get in the car with people from the internet. You know what I mean? Like that could have gone very Oh. It's true, but we do actually work for him in a way. Like I run it, I, I run their Patreon. I know, I know. But I get it, I get it. It is. But he he went right in at it and he's what? still alive, so we're all good. Oh, I know. <laughs> but yeah, that could have gone so like I couldn't get away with that. Like I couldn't put out like a tweet and be like, yo, does anyone want to pick me up from LAX? Um <laughs> Cause like that just wouldn't go well for me. Do you know what I mean? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. I get in the car and be like, "Why does my driver have no pants on? I need a new car." <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm like, are you driving stick? Oh no, no, I'm getting out. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when Billy Belford shows up. <laughs> oh, Janine, uh, Janine brings up a good point. There was a hilarious quote by Andrew Guy. That was cut out from that match. <laughs> and, and he leans back after getting, I believe it was, uh, it's not blue, it's cerulean. And he <laughs> leans back and he was like, fuck, I am so hard right now. <laughs> and they were just all like, oh, no. And I was like, oh, they have, they, there's no chance they're leaving it in there. I feel like we started having more rules about cursing and guidelines that were basically <laughs> like the way the JTE rule was made for JTE, the no cursing was made for Andrew Guy. <laughs> well, I mean, you kind of broke that when Andrako jumped at you in the, that last post interview. Which one? Uh, what was that last team match? When Andrejko jumped in, uh, it was Shazam, and he and Bib started going through it, and you yelled, fuck, he scared the shit out of me. Oh, that's so funny. I didn't know they left that in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it. I had no idea. I had no idea that they left that in there. But, yeah, Andrejko, like, it was just, um, they legit startled me. Um, but, yeah, it's so funny. Um, All right, we're gonna kind of slow it down here. We're gonna wrap it up. We do have some questions from the chat that we uh, promised we would get to, so I, uh, I'll throw them up here as we get them. Brian Fernandez wants to know best place to live, Florida or LA? LA. LA. Okay. LA. My hair is not cut out to live in Florida anymore. We went back there, and I was like, "Oh, you're about to see some stuff, Emma." <laughs> yeah. And it was just like my hair just isn't. It still hasn't recovered from Florida. It's like still like catches every little bit of humidity. I have naturally curly hair, so Ooh. it's a disaster. That is it. I live in Texas. I know that humidity. <laughs> oh, I don't want to hear Jeremiah Morris's comment. Cardinals or Cubs? Jeremiah Morris wants to know. Uh, I'm Ray's girl. Raise girl. Oh, just don't want to live. I'm kidding right now. Oh, 
<laughs> Mine's trying to come up too. Mine's trying to come up too. They're both trying to get on. Honorary <laughs> action. Okay, Jen, I will say I cannot wait to hear you all talk about the Astros. I'm a Texas girl. I'm in Texas. So I cannot wait to hear y'all talk about this whole Astro shit that's going on right now. It's going to be fun. Um, so I, with the Astros anyway, people don't even realize how bad it actually is. They're not using cameras. They're not sign stealing. Sign stealing is gamemanship. Right. They are not using cameras. What they are using are these things, uh, I think they're called edutronics, but what, regardless of what they are, they're AI. They're yeah artificial intelligence to steal signs and what they were doing is they basically got them approved by major league baseball to monitor their own pitchers the problem is it's a half a millimeter change to monitor the catcher wow so the cameras were left on for the other team, obviously. And what that AI is able to do is it's predictive. So by the end of the first quarter, they already have all of your team signs. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, it just hurts. It hurts my heart. It's artificial intelligence. Another thing that they, that they have is they're able to, like, put these type vests on you that basically can assess what your health is going to be like uh, predictively um, if you stay the same course. It's very weird. They're like death stones from Rick and Morty, basically. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yes. you know what's going to happen to you. Uh, wow. Barring something, you know, freak accident. But what they're using is AI, and it's scary because some teams are just so much more ahead of the curve. Um, I think my husband posted a job listing in the beginning of September of them looking for people that had the capability to do these type of things. So wow. I think that they've been doing this stuff for a while. Yeah. And the scarier thing is they need to find someone. Major League Baseball needs to find someone that's ahead of the curve on technology and knows how to beat these things before they even come out because they're on the cutting edge. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Literally, I mean, like, how are you supposed to beat it when they literally are learning your signs? Right. They learn your signs by the end of the first inning. And that's, that's so a huge deal. Deal. Yeah, I'm sorry, Thrawn. Um, I've been rescuing animals all day. What the fuck did you do with your Sunday? Hmm. Um, I'm exhausted. But yeah, by the end of the first inning, you they've already learned your signs. Um <laughs> Thrawn is our, our residential troll, so just Throw him over to the way. <laughs> it's fine. I don't care. I eat him for breakfast. Yeah, um, absolutely. But anyways, yeah, it's uh, it's quite an ordeal of what Major League Baseball is going to end up going through. This is going to be steroids part two if they don't get a, a handle on it really fast. There's going to be an asterisk on that world title. So. I think what's going to end up coming down is they're going to end up basically having to have – straight communication with the pitcher and the catcher through headsets. It's like mm -hmm. technology is not going away. So you're going to actually have to embrace it. Mm -hmm. But that said, there are people that have been cheating. And while mm -hmm. there are no written rules yeah. strictly against it, except for you're not allowed to use technology, which is why Apple watches are banned. Right. right. That. I'm a Red Sox yeah. fan. So I, I um, arrived during that. Uh, that the, old, the, way the, the way that, um, the nationals got around it is they basically had like five different sets of signs and they would rotate which set of signs they were doing so you couldn't learn the sequence. So the camera couldn't figure it out. So they prepared for it. They That's basically, why they and they prepared for it. They were like, if they're stealing yeah. signs, this is our way around it. I mean, so, it's yeah. so fucked up that they even had to do that, though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been a part of the game for a long time. And so I think that adapting to that sort of thing is, is pretty smart on the nationals end on that. But I mean, but baseball, baseball has become so mathematical. Like it's it's being run by a bunch of nerds now who don't necessarily know how to play the game. Eventually, what's going to happen is all the baseball players are going to show up to the field. They're going to plug everybody into a system, and they're going to go. Guess what? You won. Everybody go home, and no one is going to even play baseball because they've sucked the fun out of the game. It's no one wants to play anymore because it's just all computer analytics. You know what oh. I mean? Like the managers aren't even making decisions anymore. I'm pretty convinced Gabe Kapler's a robot. You know, like that's, <laughs> that's where the game of baseball is at right now. That's, that's such a bummer to my heart because I'm a big baseball fan. So it's just, that just bums me out. Me too. I love baseball. <laughs> yeah. I love uh, baseball even, well, like I said, I'm, I'm out of my mind tired right now. And I'm accidentally, are you kidding me guys? Really? <laughs> <laughs> they knocked All right. it. 
they knocked over a stool and then they, all hell broke loose. So, <laughs> okay, one or two more questions, and we'll let you go. And, and yes. enjoy it, bro. I can't find the question to highlight it, but I asked earlier what what you're looking forward to most in AEW. What I'm looking to mo forward most in AEW. Yeah. God. I don't really know. I I really enjoyed Full Gear. I thought it was a brilliant show. Um, I'm really hoping there's more dip and dot spots because Chris Jericho getting his head slammed into a freezer of a dip and dots and JR saying, by God, they're going to destroy the dip and dots was one of the greatest calls I think I've ever heard in wrestling. And I just love how innovative they are and how different things feel because they feel fresh and they're always looking <laughs> to keep that vibe. Um, they don't, they don't want it to ever feel like something someone else has already done or doing because frankly, some of those ways are antiquated and these guys are always kind of, they're always sniffing around on the internet. They're always listening to fans. They're always looking at, what they can do to bring the audience like more in, you know what I mean? Like so that it's, that's the best way I could explain it is they just really care about the audience. You know what I mean? They care about the product. They aren't sitting there like other companies trying to spoon feed you a product and being like, well, this is how it is, whether you like it or not. And people can say that that's fan service, but at the end of the day, if you aren't serving your fans, then what are you doing? There you good. go. Fair enough. You know? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. There's a good fan service. There's a good fan service out there. I so to AEW. I really, I really do hope that there's a second uh, Cody match. But I just I he's not really cleared to wrestle right now. Um that's not kayfabe. Mm -hmm. He was legitimately messed up after that match in Baltimore. Um and so I hope that, that he's doing better. Uh he got hit again because MJF's an idiot, um, last week in Nashville. So I'm not with them this week in Indianapolis, but I'm curious to see how it shakes up. There we go. One last question, then well, I'll let I'm you go. I'm always curious. Oh, oh, I am looking forward to seeing MJF get his. <laughs> I would not be shocked in the least if it's my husband putting him through a table. Will that be on I'm TV just going to Table has... I'm just going to request the table has chips on it. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a Patreon level somewhere. Get a video of that, and we'll uh, definitely get some payment for that. Yeah. Uh, Janine, you haven't shied away from calling out rookies who toe the line between real attitude and character. Do you think a rookie's summit should be a thing? Oh, yeah. I've already been talking to Christian and, and trying to get this in the works for a while now. It's just a matter of everybody's schedules lining up because a lot of our rookies aren't local. Um, they're actually fans that we found from fan leagues and they're across the country or even I think Paul's in Hawaii. But um, the way I explain it to people is if I can go to work with legends like Dustin Rhodes and Chris Jericho and be treated with respect, if you think I'm going to take any bullshit from a rookie, you are sorely mistaken. And I don't have to say which one I told it to, but one of them talked back to someone that is like a higher up person at Schmodown. And I found them like within 30 seconds of it happening as it happened on camera. I pulled them aside and I was like, if you ever do that to me again with the cameras rolling, I said, I will make sure you never come back here. And I'm like, and that'll be by your choice. I'm like, because I'm the one person here you just don't mess with. And I will, I am fiercely, fiercely loyal to the people in the Schmodown that have become my family, especially the women there. And I will not allow people to speak to women with certain tones and certain words. And uh, I stand by that, you know, and that's something that I just, I feel like there's, um, Mark Andreco calls it uh, fam like earned familiarity. You have to earn that ability to talk to people a certain way. And that definitely bodes for people that are new to the schmodown, you know, um, you can't walk into, you would never walk into a new place of work and start making jokes or start saying like, if you like walking in and being like to your boss, what's up dickhead? Like you can't do that. Like you don't, you don't earn, you have to earn that rapport with someone and you haven't done that yet. So, um, so I've always, I've always said, um, 
Janine and Smets have always handled being a rookie with the most, the utmost class. And I was like, if you want to know what a rookie is supposed to be, look no further than those two because they will come to all the events, whether they're playing or not. And they're just there to support because yeah. at the end of the day, they just love the game. And they have always respected the people around them. They recognized what we were trying to do as a whole. And at the end of the day, the Schmodown doesn't need any of us. You know what I mean? It's only It only exists because the fans exist and the fans want it. And so it's like if we, we all kind of decided that if it got to a point where it wasn't going to be fun, that a lot of us would leave. And so when I saw some of the other people considering leaving, I was like, we have to shut this down. We cannot let people come in here and disrupt the chemistry that this group has built. Because at the end of the day, we're all friends and we're all family. And so they either need to come in and assimilate or they need to get the fuck out. That's a good, that's, that's awesome to hear. Has, has it, is it so you have started? Everyone is that? welcome. We are the most welcoming fan group ever. Um, we are the most, we, we love our fans. We love the people that have created the fan leagues, but at the same time, there needs to be a mutual respect mm -hmm. between fans and talent, especially when talent gives fans the kind of access that Christian and Mark give you, because you don't see many other companies besides possibly uh, AEW that are giving fans the kind of access to people like Christian and Mark do. Absolutely. You know, um, there was uh, something that happened, an incident that happened at the Orlando, uh, at the Orlando um, live event mm -hmm. where someone did something inappropriate to talent there. And Mark made sure it was handled immediately. But it's like, um, luckily we knew the individual and it wasn't like a fan or someone that like, it was a friend of a friend that was, that was there that wasn't supposed to be there mm -hmm. that did something inappropriate. But I was so, my first thought was, is I'm so grateful it wasn't a fan because I never want to feel like I have to remove fan access to Schmodown fans or wrestling fans because I can't trust them to respect boundaries. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I really do appreciate our Schmodown fans and, and how much respect that they give us. You know what I mean? Because that, like I said, that respect is very mutual between the fans and the talent. That's right. I hope that made sense. No, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Especially with the environment that's going on in, in uh, you know, the reactors channels and all of that stuff right, right now. And then the, how to respond in a kayfabe sort of way. I know that the Facebook page and it's very early days was very toxic in that sort of sense where there was a lot of fans that were just kind of kayfabing on there and not really understanding what you said. You got to earn that. You really do have to earn that, that right. You have to earn familiarity. Yeah. You do. You know what I mean? Like you have to earn that rapport and it's, um, and I'm guilty of it too. I've been guilty of it too in other places that I've worked. And so I've really gone out of my way at AEW. I feel like at least I, I, I hope I have to make sure that I don't repeat certain mistakes that I've made in other places that I've worked because I do kind of walk in with this vibe where I, I've never known a stranger in my life because I'll just talk to literally anyone despite my crazy social anxiety. I, it's more like out of awkwardness and not knowing what to do. Like I'm very like Ricky Bobby. Like I don't know what to do with my hands. Like that's <laughs> who I am on a regular basis. I have such bad social anxiety when I talk to new people. But, um, but yeah, I, <laughs> I hope that made sense. It did. Yeah, it did. It absolutely. Totally absolutely. did. I think a lot of fans will appreciate it. I, like that. I, I saw, I see a comment from Garth uh, where he says, no one makes fun of your family mm -hmm. unless they are family. And it's kind of like when you have, like I have a younger sister and we always go to bat for each other. Don't get me wrong. We'd also claw each other's eyeballs out. But that said, <laughs> it's like, can't mess with like, that's my asshole. You can't mess with them. That's my, like, she's part of me. Like we will go, we'll go like, fist to fist over this, you know? Um, we always have each other's back, even though, like I said, there's that sibling rivalry. Right. That's actually how we are with Ben, because we've actually grown to know Ben so much that we were able to give him shit, and he loves it and gives it back to us. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we could say fuck Bateman and not feel bad about it. We can call him a traitor all day long on this podcast, and he will know that we mean that with the most love and respect to Ben Bateman. Exactly, exactly. It's like, traitor. 
Exactly. That's what it is. So. Trader, please um, come back to Team Action. We miss you. Um, someone said Kayfabe's dead. Uh, I don't know if it's dead. Um, I think people don't. The things that are kayfabe have changed. Do you know what I mean? Like no one's giving birth to hands anymore. <laughs> if anyone gets that, I do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we get that. Yeah. I'm like, if anyone gets that reference, good for you. Um, like <laughs> fans have just changed what they're willing to accept as the fake storyline part. You know what I mean? Um, and so that's what I. I don't know that kayfabe's dead. Though. Uh, there's sometimes it's stuff happens and even I being backstage or being around people, I'm like, was that a shoot? Was that, was that a work? I don't know. I'm like, I don't know what happened. You know, like I just roll with it. Um, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, you guys, it's about, it's about an hour 10 into this. We've had such a great time with Jen Sturger. We don't want to keep you here any much longer than we need to. Thank you all so much for everyone in the chat joining in. This was a great episode. We really enjoy this, Jen. A lot of the things that you said today are really important to all of us as fans, understanding those little dynamics between KFIB and stuff like that. And all of those little inside bits are always really yeah, great. If anyone needs a lesson in KFIB or just needs to know if something's KFIB, just reach out to me and I'll try to explain it to you in, in terms that make sense to your brain. Because, I mean, I get it. Like, it's hard to wrap your head around it sometimes. Um, that said, be kind to each other in the chat rooms and be kind to each other, like, in the Facebook groups, because this is a family at the end of the day. Sometimes a dysfunctional one. Um, Thanksgiving is going to be weird for some of us, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Good stuff. Jen Sturger, we love you so much. Plug what you got, girl. Tell us where we can find you and all of that good stuff. So you can find me every, well, not every Wednesday, but you can find me sometimes working with AEW on TNT. Um, you can find me, obviously, at the Schmodown. Spectacular's coming up. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, go to the website. I don't remember what it is. because, Like I said, I'm running on my last brain cells for the day. Um, but yeah, come. It's going to be brilliant. Um, bring some caffeine because those are long days, but they're so worth it. And they're so action packed. And I think it's going to be really cool to share that in front of a live audience. Um, and yeah, catch me on Swings and Misses Monday through Friday. It's a show with my husband. We talk about sports, pop culture, you name it. Uh, I have to go and do so much prep right now. It's going to be a long night. But it was totally worth it. You guys have been so fun. And I'm really appreciative for you guys having me on. I know you guys can have pretty much everybody on that you want. So um, the fact that I even got selected is pretty sweet so thank you thank you jen we I love, love you. it you so much. hopefully i didn't say anything too dumb like i said social anxiety i don't know what to do with my hands you're no. perfect, perfect. Do with me. <laughs> same so much and same something that offends you i mean I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> You feel that way. Art, you guys, be safe. Have a good night. Take care of each other. And um, check out my podcast, Swings and Misses. Okay. Everyone, thank you so much for coming in and hanging out with us today on the Chill to Action show on Sundays. You know where to find us every, every week. Next week, you'll find us on Monday uh, with Mark Riley. Yeah, we got Mark Riley on. So make sure you check us out next week. Everyone in the chat, everyone in the, everyone here. We love y'all so much, y'all. Have oh, a good yeah. night. We salute you.